This is Seven National News and in your top story, Dubai has been named the most expensive city in the Middle East but is still outside the top 20 across the globe. Dubai is the 22nd most expensive city in the world for the price of a standardized basket of 122 goods and services, while Doha placed 36 out of the 72 cities covered in the study. The survey also ranked Dubai 27th for individual purchasing power, while Doha was at 44th place. It further revealed that people work the most in Asia, Africa and the Middle East as well as South America at over 2,000 hours per year, while workers in Western Europe enjoy the shortest working hours and highest number of days of paid vacation. Oslo, Tokyo and Zurich were also identified as the most expensive cities in the world. The midday break rule ends today according to Emirates news agency WAM. Today is the last day for the afternoon work ban at open places during the summer. This is, an in, this is in accordance rather, with the decision issued by Labour Minister Sakhil Khobash, which began on June 15th. Humayd bin Damis al suwaidi Assistant Undersecretary of the Ministry of Labour, praised employers for observing the ban during an event at a Labour accommodation, marking the end of the rule which secured the interests of both entities by ensuring productivity for companies as well as the safety of workers. The Emirates ID Authority has announced that from today, children with visas on their parents' passports can apply for their Emirates ID cards from tomorrow. The deadline to register identity cards for children under 15 years is fast approaching, and EDA officials have stressed that youngsters are not required to be physically present at registration centers, but they are only required to fill up forms at accredited typing centers. The authority has stated that from September 16th, registration centers will begin receiving applications of children listed on their parents' passports. UAE national children require original passports, parents' ID card, family book and a photograph, while expatriate kids require valid passport of a parent or the child's parents' ID and a photograph. The deadline will be the 30th of September and any delays will be charged at a daily fee of 20 dirhams with a maximum fee, maximum fine of 1,000 dirhams. More than 700 of the UAE's finest cars gathered over the weekend to participate in the 12th edition of the Motoring Middle East Meet. Starting off in January 2011 with just over 40 cars, the event has reached higher levels of interest and has developed into a large-scale show, incorporating everything from regular stock cars to valuable and rare classics. The meet attracted all models of cars, Mustangs, Lamborghinis, Chevrolets, even cars from the 1950s, to name a few. With a mutual love for cars, bikes and motoring, proud moto enthusiasts paid homage to the term boys' toys. According to chief editor of MME, Shazad Sheikh, and Events such as this gives motor aficionados an opportunity to show off their cars, network and also get help and advice when it comes to buying, modifying or restoring cars. What we're seeing here is people that are really enthusiastic about a hobby that they absolutely love, which is cars. And cars fire up the imagination. They, they make people excited. Even if people don't own these cars, they've come here to have a look at them because they're like a dream object. They're something that you aspire to. And some of these people have lucky enough and fortunate enough to have made their dreams come true. And I like the fact that they're bringing those cars out. We have a lot of collectors and people in Dubai that tend to own these cars but keep them hidden away. What we have here is a community that's bringing the cars out and letting people share them. You know, you can come here, you can, some of the owners will let you sit in the car, feel what the car is like, will tell you a story about how they came to find it and how they bought it and how they run it. And a lot of people, we have a lot of photographers here who have this one opportunity to take pictures of cars they would never normally find. It's the same old story, boys toys. And although we do have quite a lot of women coming down as well, you know, there are a lot of women petrol heads out there. But basically, it's, they've got nice cars, they want to show them off. We get together like this, so there's a place for everyone to meet, everyone to talk, swap ideas, look at some fantastic cars, and you see the, the quality of the classics and stuff that's out behind us here. It's just amazing. There's some fantastic car clubs get behind us, the Mustang Club, to, you know, and the Challenger Club and the Volkswagen Club. They all get behind it. They all like to bring the vehicles down and show us what they've got. Meanwhile, company representatives from the Emirates Motorsports Federation have hosted shows for the past 10 years and stated that every show gets bigger and better. These cars and modifying and speed, it's since child, you know. Everybody likes cars here. You can see they're playing with the small cars, the toys, remote control cars. Even the video games, maybe they go more for... Uh, racing games so I think it's part of our culture here motoring as all cars bikes boats planes whatever 
And finally, in your news bulletin, food enthusiasts are in for a treat for the next week of September as over 350 chefs from some of the city's best hotels will be offering master cooking classes, demos and etiquette workshops. Hosted by Bourgeois, the two-and-a-half-week World Food Festival includes a range of the most popular genres of food, including Italian, seafood, Thai, modern German and Vietnamese cuisine. Talented chefs representing three- to five-star hotels across the Emirates will be revealing some of their culinary secrets to a team of aspiring chefs. Registration is free, however, classes are on a first-come, first-served basis, and participants are encouraged to sign up at the venue before 4 p.m. on the day itself. Company representatives of Bergerman stated that the classes are to inspire the art of cooking and for the public to become more accustomed to, to traditional dishes. Treat is all about, you know, having a feast of creativity, learning, enjoyment, sampling, all put together in one basket. And, uh, you know, the kind of cuisine we are covering is, you know, taking, you know, the most popular genres. And, you know, you've seen Italian today, a great master class. Uh, we started with modern German, Vietnamese. Uh, we had Arabic and French yesterday. Then what's coming up is seafood, Thai, you know, uh, an international evening, along with Indian fusion. So, you know, taking different, different genres because food is about a journey. It's about experimentation. It's about also tingling your taste buds and making them want to try different things apart from the usual stuff that, you know, a lot of us tend to stick with. I love Italian food and I love to help my mom uh, to, Yanni, I love to, I like to help her in the kitchen. It's so fun. Over the weekend, Italian chefs Fortunato Leocata and Francesco Buca, both representing the Marriott Group in Dubai, delivered a sizzling lineup of traditional Italian meals, proving to be popular among the audience. I have to say, it was a very interesting to work with a wonderful team and a family working together, and uh, you know, I have to say, collaborate each other with me. And uh, I have to say, it was excellent. Fantastic experience because I never did this kind of cooking class in my life. I just work in a busy environment, a busy hotel around the world. But this was one of the most, most, most interesting part of my life, I have to say. We make this master class for all women and I think one simple dish and traditional Italian dish for um, it's possible you make in your home.